Hello grade tens. welcome back to another functions video with me, Miss Martins. If you have not yet subscribed, please subscribe. It'll mean the world to me and comment down below what you want to see next. In this video, we're going to continue looking at functions, past paper questions. We're going to be looking at this question from this paper. If you missed the video where I went over this previous question, please go check it out, linked in the description box below. Let's jump right in. Please always read the stuff in the beginning of the question first, and first make sure you know what function we are talking about. So here they give the equation, and you should know as soon as you see a divide by x, we're talking about a hyperbola, okay? So if you take a look at this equation, we should know that a determines the shape of the graph, we'll get to that later. Q is the horizontal asymptote, so it goes like this. It's where the graph approaches but never touches or crosses, and x is equal to zero, so that's this one over here, is what we call the vertical asymptote. The reason why we know that it is x is equal to zero is because if you put zero in the place of x, anything divided by zero, so a divided by zero, one divided by zero, negative one divided by zero, whatever divided by zero, you can't divide by zero, you're going to get undefined. So we have a vertical asymptote where x is equal to zero, and we have a horizontal asymptote where at the moment, I don't know where this is, but they give me the following information. The range of the graph is y is equal to, or y is an element of, sorry, y is an element of negative, negative infinity to 1, not including 1, or 1 to positive infinity, not including 1. So what this is telling me is if I look at the y values of the graph, remember range is y values, if you look at the y values of the graph, the graph starts, the y values start from negative infinity, so all the way down there, then the y values exist, 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 and then all of a sudden, where y is equal to 1, the graph does not exist, because you see it says it goes to 1, not including, round brackets means not including. And then it goes from 1 again to positive infinity. So after 1, the graph exists again. So what this tells me is the following. There is a horizontal asymptote at the point where y is equal to 1. Okay, there, y is 1. Which means that q is 1. And this leads perfectly into the first question where they want this equation. Now, equation. In order to get the equation, we need to fill out two things. q, which we just figured out. q is 1. And we need to fill in a, we need to get a, we need to solve for a. So what I have so far is the following, g of x equals a over x plus 1. Now how do I get a? Well, they also tell me this important piece of information. The graph or the function passes through this point, 3 and 2, remember? x would be 3, y would be 2. So if I take that point and I sub it in to my equation, I can solve for a. So... In the place of x, I put 3, so a over 3 plus 1. In the place of y, remember this represents your y, in the place of y, we put 2. Now, all I need to do is solve for a. How do you do this? You take the plus 2, sorry, the plus 1 over first, so it says 2. What's the opposite of plus 1? Minus 1. So we've got 2 minus 1, which is 1, and you've got a over 3. This means divide by 3. When you take that over, what's the inverse operations of divide by 3? Times by 3. So you're going to say 1 times 3 equals a. So a is therefore equal to 3. Therefore, your equation for g of x is equal to a, we just found, is 3. 3 over x plus 1. This, by the way, is where you get your marks for figuring out that Q is 1, for substituting in that point, and then for your answer. 6.1.2 says they want us to give the equation of H, the axis of symmetry of G, and it has a positive gradient. Now, what you first need to understand is that the mother function, the, uh, the normal parabola, standard parabola, 1 over X, plus q, where q is 0, so can you see the horizontal asymptote is over here, where y is 0. This is not my graph for this exam question, but I just want to show you. It has two axes of symmetries, or equations of symmetries. Basically, it has the following. This line over here 
as you can see, it chops the graph in half. If I have to fold that graph over itself, it's an equation of symmetry. It's a line of symmetry. And what would that equation be? It's a straight line. It has a positive gradient. How do I know? Because it's increasing like that if you read from left to right. So that equation, this blue line over here, would have the equation y is equal to x. There's a second equation of symmetry, which is this one over here. Take note how it is now a decreasing line, okay, which means it has a negative gradient, which means that this line has the equation of y equals negative x because it has a decreasing gradient. You see it goes down. But take note how both of these lines pass through the origin, okay? So it doesn't have a y-intercept. It's y equals x. Not equals y equals x plus 1, y equals x plus 2. It goes through the origin. But that is because the q value over here, this q value is plus 0. So the line or the, the axis of symmetry will also have a plus 0. It has no y-intercept. In our graph, in our exam question, what we have is a graph that actually looks like this. Remember, the horizontal asymptote is where y is equal to 1. So basically what happens is the entire graph shifts up one unit. This horizontal asymptote doesn't go over here anymore. It's not along the x-axis. It's 1 shifted up. What that means is that the axis of symmetry will also be shifted up by a unit. So instead of the uh, equation or the axis of symmetry being here, remember when it was here, it had the equation of y equals x. It needs to be shifted up one like this. So basically, it needs to cut over here. It needs to cut through here instead of cutting through the origin. That means that this line no longer has an equation of y equals x. It has an equation of y equals x plus 1. So because the function was shifted up by one unit, the axis of symmetry is also essentially done the same. Therefore, your answer is h of x is equal to x plus 1. They did say the equation of h, so h of x. Now they want me to sketch the graphs, which I basically kind of did in rough, but they say clearly show all the asymptotes and intercepts with the axes. You must always label where your asymptotes are and always label your x-intercepts and your y-intercepts. So I'm going to freehand sketch this. Please use a ruler when you do this. I've got my y-axis and my x-axis, so my Cartesian plane. I've drawn in my horizontal asymptotes. Um, again, label it. Y is equal to 1. You can also label it here, so you can put a little 1 here. Okay, I've drawn in my function, my hyperbola, but now I know students often ask me, ma'am, how do you know? So the hyperbola consists of both of these parts like this. My students ask me, ma'am, how do you know that it goes here and here, which mine does, and not here and here? It all depends on the a value. Remember my a value, it was y is equal to 3 over x, plus 1. If this is a positive value, then think of it like an increasing straight line like that. The hyperbola will exist in quadrant 1 and quadrant 3. If A is negative, then, but it's not in my case, but if it is, then it exists in quadrant 2 and quadrant 4, as if it were like a decreasing linear function. I hope that makes sense. I do cover this in more detail in my functions playlist, so check that out. So that's where it goes. Now, I've also drawn in my vertical asymptote where x is equal to 0. As you can see, the graphs approach the asymptotes but never touch it. Now, what I actually need to indicate on this curve is what this x-intercept is. Now, how would you find the x-intercept? Remember, my equation is y equals 3 over x plus 1. How would you find the x-intercept? You make y 0. So if you're looking for the x-int, you make y 0. So we're solving quickly for my x-intercept. Here, y is 0. You take over the plus 1. It becomes negative 1, like this over here. And please don't make this mistake. A lot of my students make this mistake. Even senior students, x, what you're looking for, is in the denominator. So what happens when we solve for x is it's not 3 times minus 1. No. You take the x, whatever you're solving for, if it's at the bottom of the fraction, it tops places with the negative 1. So in this case, it doesn't actually make a difference. But anyway, it is 3 divided by negative 1. So x is negative 3. So this coordinate over here is actually negative 3, 0. 
Then I've just also labeled the graph g of x. I've also drawn in my straight line graph h of x. They say on the same sort of system of axes, so same Cartesian plane. Here's my graph h of x. It cuts the y axis or it, its y intercept is over here where y is 1. And how would I find the x intercept of h? Well, remember to find the x intercept, you make y 0. So when I do this, I actually see that the x intercept of h is negative 1, which means that I drew my graph quite badly. But, you know, usually they give you um, graph paper so that you can avoid making scale issues. But x is negative 1, so yeah, that should be negative 1. So my y-intercept for my hyperbola is negative 3. My y, not my y-intercept, my x-intercept for my hyperbola is negative 3. My x-intercept for my straight line is negative 1. If I use proper graphing paper, this is what it looks like. Remember that the function approaches your... Um, asymptotes but never ever touches it you can see it over there the next question says write the equations of the asymptotes of f if f of x is equal to negative g of x plus 5 okay now first things first what was g of x g of x was equal to 3 over x plus 1 so g of x is equal to this so basically what we're doing now is in the place of g of x, we're putting this. So it's almost like a substitution question. So f of x is equal to minus g of x. You see the minus there? Minus g of x. So we're going to go minus like this. And then plus 5. So outside the bracket, we're going to put plus 5. So it's like a substitution question. In the place of g of x, we're substituting what g of x is equal to. Then, basically, what we're doing here is kind of like distributing. So, we've got negative 3 over x, negative 1 plus 5. If we simplify that, we get negative 3 over x, negative 1 plus 5 is plus 4. Now, looking at this equation of f of x, what would be the equations of the asymptotes? Remember, we said earlier that this value over here, that is the value of the horizontal asymptote. And remember, if I draw a Cartesian plane over here, maybe it helps you. Horizontal asymptote it would be plus 4. That equation would be y is equal to 4. Now, again, a lot of my students get confused with this. Ma'am, they ask me, ma'am, why is it y is equal to 4, not x is equal to 4? It's a horizontal asymptote, which means it's going like this. It means that it's cutting the y-axis. Take a look at the line. Do you see this dotted line? It's cutting the y-axis. So therefore, I know if it's cutting the y-axis, it's y is equal to 4. The vertical asymptote, the x equals asymptote, the one that goes like this, will be x is equal to 0. How do you know that? Because x cannot be 0 over here. If x is 0 over here, x basically cannot equal 0, which means it's an asymptote. If x is 0, negative 3 divided by 0 is undefined. The function does not exist. So the vertical asymptote would be like that. So these are the equations of your asymptotes. No, you can't just say 0 and 4. You need to tell me x is equal to 0, which means it's this line, y is equal to 4, which means it's this line. I hope that this video has been helpful. Remember, I have more videos just like this one, while well, practicing different questions, obviously. I have more videos on other math topics, other past paper exam questions. Subscribe, please, for more videos like this in the future, so I can continue to make this in whatever spare time I manage to find as a full-time working teacher. But I wish you the best of luck with this section. Bye, everyone.